Welcome in a week three edition of the cash process. I'm your host, Ben Hostler. If you guys have watched the video before, throughout our six years of doing this, you know who I am. Thank you guys for tuning in as always. I heard a lot of flack from uh, the week two video. Audio quality was not great. I apologize when I recorded that. I had no idea that there was audio issues. And by the time, by the time that I had realized there was audio issues, I had already recorded the video, did all the stuff, uploaded, maximized all, all the good stuff. So apologies on the week two video audio quality. I think week three should be better. So we're here to reflect on week two, preview the week three DFS slate. If you're watching on YouTube, please leave a like on the video. It helps us out. Subscribe to the channel. I've been pumping out more content than I ever have. If you can hear those Discord notifications, apologies on that as well. I don't know if that shows up on the video or not, but um, we're doing not only the normal stuff that we normally do. I'm doing these live streams Saturday night, Sunday morning, throughout the week as well. Um, I have a survivor pool video that's going to be dropping every Wednesday. Last week was the first edition of that. So hopefully you guys watched that. It did decent. Uh, let's see if we can get a thousand views on this video and the survivor pool video for this week. So if you guys play in survivor pools, I would appreciate it if you go check that video out. Uh, it will be dropping uh, sometime Wednesday. So check Wednesday afternoon. All this stuff is available on iTunes as well. If you don't want to watch my face and the screen, you can listen to it in your car uh, on your way to work, whatever suits you. Um, and as always, if you want to sign up for my core plays, if you want access, um, to who I'm playing in my lineups by the time Sunday comes around, you can head to dfscarmacom slash pricing, uh, and sign up for that. So week two, uh, it was much better than week one. If you guys watched the videos, you know, uh, week one, historically I had won six week one slates in a row. And then this year I got destroyed in week one. Moved off of all my Tyreek Hill on Sunday morning, and it ended poorly. Week two was much better. Uh, GPP teams still weren't great. Um, I need to get dialed in in the uh, the GPP scene, but uh, cash game winner on both FanDuel and DraftKings. I felt that week two was a very – I love weeks like week two. Week two to me was a um, – pardon my language if you have children in the car, whatever. Week two was a nuts on the table week in my opinion because it wasn't a week where there was going to be a lot of heavy cash game trains. Not saying that that didn't happen, because it's going to happen every single week in the current DFS landscape um, with the amount of content, projections, everything that people have readily available to them. It's not six years ago. So you're never going to be able to prevent a massive train of lineups. Um, but week two, I knew was not going to be week one. It was very, very clear. If you know anything about DFS, you knew where people were going. And there was pretty much two clear lineups to play. And I just didn't want to play the same team as everybody else. It's just, it's just not fun. It's 2023. And it's not fun to do that sometimes. So I tried to get slightly different. It worked out to my disadvantage because Tyreek Hill went absolutely nuclear. Uh, you live and you learn. Week two was way different. It was there was so many ways to go because of the way the pricing worked out. Um, there was studs off of the slate, such as Justin Jefferson. So, um, and then the Eagles were not on the slate as well. And then we had this, like the current landscape of how NFL DFS is going is if you look back to four or five years ago, it's so funny how things changed. Four or five years ago, there was a couple 10k running backs. And if you were playing any sort of cash game, double up head to head on DraftKings, and you didn't just plug in those 10K running backs, you were pretty much going to lose regardless of what else you did with the rest of your lineup. And fast forward four or five years till now, 2023, people want to spend as little money salary as possible at running back. And it seems like last year this happened as well. It seems like we're getting these cheaper running backs every single week. So for cash games, it makes sense. Um, years ago, you'd spend down at quarterback, spend up at running back. And now it's like, you know, you're saving, you're, you're getting these 5k 
uh, running backs every single week. So you can plug those guys in, spend up at receiver, spend up at quarterback, whatever, whatever you guys uh, want to do. So um, it's important to keep that in mind as we roll throughout the season. I do think it's going to be more of the same. I think we're going to want to play mid tier running backs in your, in your mid tier or uh, in your main lineups and, and build from there. And I think it's going to be more of the same this week, which we'll talk about when we get in to the video. I do want to note um, on one thing last week. Uh, we don't often see this in NFL DFS. This is a very, very common thing in NBA DFS that people are aware of and paying attention to, but uh, it happened in, in week two in NFL. We got a huge news alert 10 minutes before lock uh, that Cam Akers was going to be inactive. And I was at my computer. I saw the news alert and I looked at Kyron Williams, but ultimately I, I didn't pivot to Ky Kyron Williams and that was a mistake. So I just want everyone to know that regardless of, I don't want to be results oriented here because Kyron Williams smashed, but when you get a news alert like that, that never happens. So 100% I should have moved to Kyron Williams and you know, you have to learn from things. So, you know, I'll take that with me moving forward, but um, I, I looked at lineups with Kyron Williams and I just decided, you know, eh, I've done all this research all week. I, I didn't, I didn't make the move and that was a mistake. So I wanted to touch on that. Um, I also told you guys on, if you watch the Saturday night stream, I let off basically saying that people are overthinking this Anthony Richardson thing. He's going to smash and nobody wants to play him. And I think it's a mistake. I didn't even end up playing him. I didn't even listen myself because I'm an idiot. But uh, luckily it worked out because we won cash games and uh, unfortunately he got hurt. I, I'm hoping he'll be able to play this week. But uh, I mean, if he if Anthony Richardson did not get hurt in that game, uh, I mean, he would have he would have did a classic break the slate like you would not have been able to get anywhere near a top prize without Anthony Richardson in your lineup because that game went crazy. Which I said on Saturday night it could. Uh, people were not talking about the fact that the Colts and the Texans were both playing extremely fast in week one. And that game went crazy and he was going to smash. He had 17 DraftKings points before halftime. So, I mean, he was going to put a monster game up. Um, but with that being said, that's enough of week two. It was a good week. Uh, upped the record to one and one on both sites in cash games. So uh, I've done enough talking. Let's get to the week three slate. I have DraftKings pulled up on my screen if you're watching on YouTube. Starting at the quarterback position, 8,300 Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, um, 25 and 20 DK his first two weeks, and it feels like he hasn't played very good. So that's how good Patrick Mahomes is. Uh, we have Josh Allen at 8,100, who was very chalky last week. We have Lamar Jackson with a Q tag on DK, but uh, he's going to be able to play. So basically we have one, two, three, four, five, six guys above 7K on DraftKings. Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Justin Fields, and Tua Tungavailoa. So how I'm looking at this week is off the top. Um, I'm not really crazy about any of these guys. Uh, I think Josh Allen is always a very, very safe cash play because of what he can do with his legs. Um, and then not only does he provide you a floor with his legs, if you look at his game log here, I mean, he didn't even really do anything running last week, only three attempts for seven yards, but, um, he provides you a little bit of a safety there. And then, I mean, he can really break a slate, uh, when you catch him on those games where, where he's passing and running. So I always feel a little bit better about him than Lamar Jackson personally, um, but I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's it's not a bad game here against Washington on the road, but um, he is 8,100. I, I really don't love any of these guys. I think that Justin Herbert, Matt and I have talked about it on videos before, but um, I think Justin Herbert's a very, very good quarterback in real life. He's kind of tough to play from a DFS perspective in cash games because he's not going to provide you anything with his legs. And if he doesn't throw for – you know, three touchdowns, like he's just not going to smash. Now, you know, you can get away with like a 25 point game like he had last week, um, you know, 300 yards, two touchdowns, 25 DraftKings points. You can certainly get away with that, but you know, he's not really, if he's down here at 69 or seven K, that's one thing when he's at 75 and Lamar Jackson who can pass and run is at 77. 
even in the highest over under of the week for Justin Herbert, it's just tougher for me to, you know, really want to play him in cash games. Now tournaments, I, uh, I think he's certainly fine. Uh, moving on down the list, Fields. I mean, he's looked so bad. I don't know how you could trust this guy in uh, in cash games, tournaments. He's always fine. To a uh, same thing, not not really a cash game guy uh, in my opinion. Uh, so then we drop down below seven k. We have Kirk Cousins, Trevor Lawrence, Anthony Richardson, uh, Jared Goff, Dak, Watson, Wilson, Geno. These guys down here. Uh, I think Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is a similar to. Justin Herbert to me, I don't know if they have the same ceiling. I think Herbert's ceiling is higher than Trevor Lawrence at this stage, but Trevor Lawrence is similar. He he needs to pass for multiple touchdowns, and he can certainly do that against Houston at home, and he's $700 cheaper. So, you know, I could see a situation where people want to play uh, Trevor Lawrence, uh, I like Kirk Cousins a lot this week. I, I don't know like if I'll get there. Apologies for that. Uh, I don't know if I'll get there in cash games, but uh, I, I love Kirk Cousins this week, especially if people are going to play Lawrence. I think it's a pretty good pivot. Like I said before, highest total of the week is that uh, Minnesota Chargers game, uh, over 54 points, huge over-under, maybe the highest over-under we've seen of the season. I can't remember what – uh, KC Detroit was on the first first game of the season, but uh, 54 and a half over under is no joke. It's in the dome. Kirk Cousins has always been good at home in Minnesota. And so I think he's a really good play, especially if people are going to play Trevor Lawrence. Then you have Anthony Richardson at 6,700. If he is healthy and ready to roll, tough matchup on the road against Baltimore, but I don't know how you can argue uh, with what he's doing. Like I said, Indy's playing fast. They're being aggressive, throwing the ball uh, early in downs. They're letting him run, calling a ton of designed runs. Um, you know, two two rushing touchdowns before halftime last week. Ran, ran Definitely ran pure a little bit with them recovering a close fumble. But, I mean, he can certainly do that with how fast he is. So if he's in and healthy, he's definitely going to be in consideration for me. And I don't know. I don't really love any of these cheaper guys this week. You know, Derek, uh, Jordan Love is like leading the league in passer rating or something like that. He's had back to back 20 DK point games to like 5,600. Don't know if I'd get down there in cash. Uh, Gino's always fine for me in tournaments. But um, of course, uh, if you guys watch the videos, you know, I was all in on Gino in week one. What does he do? Puts up a nine DraftKings points game at home against a bad defense. And then naturally week two pops off for a 26. I mean, it's just uh, clockwork there for me. But uh, you can always play Geno in tournaments, especially at 5,700. 5,700 feels really, really cheap for Geno Smith. So definitely can talk me into that for uh, tournaments. CJ Stroud, I have to shout him out. Not considering him really in cash games, but a 25 DK point game in your second ever start is no joke when you're not – He's not running. Um, I mean, he threw for 384 yards. I mean, I know it's Indy, but uh, definitely have to shout out um, CJ Stroud there. All right. That being said, um, I think Herbert will be popular. Um, the guys up top always get ownership. It's spread out. Um, I think people want to play Lawrence. I really like Kirk Cousins personally. I would probably even consider Kirk Cousins and Cash because, like I said, Kirk Cousins is exactly like Justin Herbert. I mean, look. 22 and 32 uh, DK to start the year. Um, he needs to have a big game passing. He's not going to provide anything rushing, but he can certainly do that at home. Highest total of the week. Um, sign me up for Kirk Cousins this week. And uh, Anthony Richardson, if he's in, definitely looks interesting. All right, moving on to running back. So running back is kind of a nightmare this week because we're going to have a lot of cheap guys again, I think. So that's where people are mainly going to go. Um, Austin Eckler is questionable. So we need to wait later on in the week. It's Tuesday night, and we don't really have a ton of news here. So I, I guess I would assume him probably closer to out as of now, but I just don't know. But for the sake of the video, let's say – let's skip this top tier running back for a minute, and let's say Austin Eckler's out. If Austin Eckler is out, we then have Joshua Kelly at 5,400. 5, 
in the highest total of the week at 50, uh, 54 and a half points. Uh, we know Nick Chubb is out. And even if they sign Kareem Hunt, I don't know if they're going to, but even if they sign Kareem Hunt after this video comes out, he's been on the street the entire summer. So what is he going to provide you on Sunday? I don't even know if he would be active. Uh, so we have Drum Ford at 4,800. Extremely, extremely tough matchup for Drum Ford. Everybody knows it. Everyone saw what happened to Josh Kelly last week. So I don't know what people would want to do with Drum Ford, but the Browns offense is very, very centered on the run game, especially with how De Deshaun Watson's looked. And they have a good run blocking line. So while it is a tough matchup, he's even cheaper than Josh Kelly was last, last week. He's only 4,800. Um, so we have him in the cash game range. So that's two cheap running backs. And then we have the creme de la creme, in my opinion. Uh, Jamal Williams is probably not going to play in this game. Expected to miss some time per Adam Schefter today on Tuesday. They don't have Alvin Kamara because he's still suspended for one more game. So that's going to give us one game at least of Kendry Miller, in my opinion, as the feature back. I know Tony Jones Jr. scored two touchdowns last week. But Tony Jones Jr. is, as Anthony says, a jag. He's just a guy. Kendra Miller is someone they drafted in the third round. And he's all the way down here at 4,300. And as you can see here, head coach Dennis Allen reported on Tuesday, Miller expects to be a full go. So I think we're going to get one game of workhorse Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller is very good in my opinion. I think he has some serious juice. And he's only 4,300. We never really get 4,300 priced backs anymore because they're aggressive, like pricing the backup guys up. So Kendra Miller is going to be an absolute stone lock if he's healthy and in and Jamal Williams is out. And unlike last week when it was kind of like there was a decision to be made, like did you want to play Josh Kelly in tournaments in that bad matchup? It, there's no decision to be made. If Kendra Miller is healthy and in and Jamal Williams is out, I would play Kendry Miller on 100% of my rosters and I will get different elsewhere. So I just talked about three cheap running backs that the ownership is going to heavily concentrate on. So that's where I think people will be going in cash games. Um, I'll go through this list. We can talk about some of these other guys. Like you could definitely play, you could play three running backs this week on DraftKings. You could just play all three cheap guys. I think that's in play. Uh, you could play two cheap guys and spend up on someone. If I spent up on someone, it would probably be Tony Pollard. He's 8K. Um, he hasn't had a monster game because Dallas has just been killing their opponents. Now, they're massive favorites here again over Arizona, so that's probably going to happen again. But we can't overstate the role that Tony Pollard has saw this season. I think anyone that faded Tony Pollard in season long uh, is probably a little bit worried right now. He is, I'm pretty sure, still first in the NFL in rush attempts inside the 10-yard line. They have been featuring him around the goal line, which is huge. He had eight targets last week, uh, caught seven of them for 37 yards, uh, did not get in the box last week, and still brought you a 19.9 DraftKings points. So elite role for Tony Pollard in an elite matchup. He is 100% in play for me in cash. You can play two cheapies and him, or you could play all three cheapies. Outside of Tony Pollard, who I think is the clear guy I would want if spending up, um, you have a bunch of tournament plays. I mean, ETN, I mean, amazing tournament play. Assuming he's in, I see this Q tag here, but uh, would assume he's fine. Uh, at home against Houston, great, great tournament play. Derrick Henry, tournament play only for me. Uh, Bijan, tournament play only. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, I'll be curious to see what, what people do with this here. So I think on a normal week, we would be more interested in Jameer Gibbs potentially with uh, David Montgomery expected to miss this game. I, I guess they haven't really come out and said that, but after the game, David Montgomery was kind of like, I might need to miss some time. So we'll see what happens with this throughout the week. Maybe he becomes more popular as the week comes on and he enters – uh, the cash game pool, you know, it's tough doing these weeks early. Uh, it's tough doing these videos early week. We just don't, I don't have a read on things sometimes, which is why it's important to watch the Saturday night stream. When I come on, watch the Sunday morning stream, uh, read my content. I tried to highlight the the chalky plays 
who's going to be chalk in my article that I put out on Fridays. But uh, we'll see what happens with Jameer Gibbs. Super, super good play. If, if he's going to end up getting uh, becoming lower owned because of these other guys, I would be very interested in him in tournaments. I don't know if they're just going to unleash him automatically if David Montgomery's out. Like they were still playing Craig Reynolds at the end of that game last week. So it remains to be seen. But one of the other, like outside of the Chargers Vikings game, high over under. And uh, he's 6,600 home game. Definitely uh, interested there. Kenneth Walker, a great tournament play. Uh, Brian Robinson has been crushing. I mean, Matt, if you guys watched the first reaction to the DraftKings pricing, Matt and I dropped that in like July. Matt was hyping up Brian Robinson. And I mean, he has been absolutely smashing. Uh, decent game in week one. Didn't didn't get in the, in the box. But uh, a big 29 DK point game last week. So shout out to uh, to Brian Robinson. Uh, we'll see about Aaron Jones. I would assume he'll be back this week, so we probably don't have to mess around with A.J. Dillon. And then most of these guys are pivots as well with, with Josh Kelly and some of those other guys there. So that's my only thoughts on the running back position. Heading over to wide receiver. A really, really tough fade on Justin Jefferson here, in my opinion. Um, I, I, would be, I would be prioritizing Justin Jefferson in my cash game lineup. Even at 9,300, the guy has not scored a touchdown yet this season, yet has put up 27 and 28.9 DraftKings points on 12 and 13 targets, and he's topped 150 yards in each game. Now he's at home where we have told you on these videos before, he has scored over 60, 70% of his career touchdowns in Minnesota. So this could be a great spot for him to get in the box. I know personally from watching the games, he's been down at the one uh, inside the five a couple times. He fumbled out of the end zone last week against Philly. So he's definitely due for a touchdown. And if he scores, if he scores or scores twice, Justin Jefferson will, will put up a Tyree kill from week one, 47.5 DraftKings points, where if you don't have him, you may not even reach the cash line. So at home, in the highest over under of the week at 54 and a half, I would be prioritizing Justin Jefferson. Tyreek Hill is fine, but like I said, probably won't be able to play both those guys in a cash lineup unless you go three cheap running backs or something weird like that. Um, but he's fine. Um, all these other guys are fine. Uh, Amon Ra will see what happens. Um, but I'm pretty sure he was just cramping at the end of that game, so he should be good to go. So we don't need to worry about any of those cheap Lions guys becoming like locks. But uh, Amon Ra at home is always a strong play for me, 100%. Uh, CD has had a great role to start the season. Um, it was not even really a close game last week, but he still got 13 targets. And, I mean, obviously he's not going to get much in a game where they went 40 to nothing. So the role looks really good. Obviously good matchup against Arizona, but you worry about any pushback from Arizona in that game for a cash perspective tournaments, it would not scare me off CD lamb at all. I think he's a great play. Uh, Keenan Allen, if Eckler's out would be a really, really strong play again, Matt highlighted that in discord for us last week uh, towards the weekend, but uh, Keenan Allen has crushed, uh, especially in terms of his target amount in games that Austin Eckler has missed. He saw another double digit targets without Eckler last week. And, you know, it just makes for a natural correlation with Justin Jefferson. If you could, attempt to fit him in your lineup. If Eckler's out, Keenan Allen, my favorite play in the mid-tier. Calvin Ridley, I have no issues going back to him. He disappointed in uh, week two, but still had eight targets. He caught a touchdown, but it was like out of the back of the end zone, so he easily could have salvaged his score uh, with another seven points. Uh, Chris Olave's had a great role to start the season as well, but probably more of a tournament play for me given his 7K price tag. Moving on down, um, there is some other names I liked in the uh, mid-tier here. I'm trying to pull my list up. All right, uh, moving on down here. I think that, uh, I don't know, I, I was kind of like excited about this Minnesota game coming in, and I was like, oh, people are going to play Lawrence, and they're not going to play Kirk and, and all this stuff, but it does seem like, Given the total of the game, it will be a popular 
game stack. Um, I think Michael Thomas is very interesting at 5,300. He's seen eight and nine targets in those first few games. And uh, he looked good to me last night on, on Monday Night Football. He, he's another guy that he's been close to to a touchdown a couple times. So um, I could see him getting in the box here. 5,300, I, I think that's a pretty good price for him. Uh, Kendrick Bourne took a step back with Devontae Parker kind of back playing a little bit more, but uh, he still saw nine targets. Um, it is a tough matchup there against the Jets. Nico Collins has been fantastic to start the season. Um, if you guys watched the weekend content from me last week, I was re- very, very in on Tank Dell. He had a great game last week too, but we can't overstate what uh, Nico Collins has been doing here. 11 and nine targets to start us out. Um, a l- little less appealing now that he's up at, to 5,300, but, you know, not bad. Uh, Zay Flowers at 5,400 I think is a great play. Um, he took a little step back last week too, went from 10 to 5 targets, but Odell Beckham did get hurt in that game. I'm not sure if Odell's going to play this week or not. Um, I guess I said he's not expected to miss any time. Regardless, they still were were kind of as the game went on, they, they went to him more. I, I think that's a good price point for him. Uh, Sky Moore actually did something last week, 16 DK points. Not sure if I could do that in, in a cash game setting, uh, but, you know, something to keep your eye on. Jackson Smith and the Jigba is a good tournament play, I think, at this price. Um, he, he's going to have a big game here at some point, and we also need to see about uh, DK Metcalf, whether or not he uh, can play this week. Um, if he's in, that would make all the Seattle guys, I think, GPP plays. If he's out, I mean, obviously we would be more interested in Lockett at 6400 And then uh, Jackson Smith and the Jigbo would become very, very shocky should DK Metcalf uh, miss that game. I also like Jaden Reed. Um, look, you guys know I've been pounding the table for Jaden Reed all summer. Uh, didn't do much, like, yardage-wise, but he's still got five and eight targets, um, two touchdowns last week. Christian Watson, I'm assuming, probably will be back for this game, though, so that probably takes him out of the uh, – the uh, cash consideration. Um, obviously, Noah Brown is on IR, so Tank Dell is going to get probably some play here uh, at 3,600. Interesting caveat. I wasn't on wide. I was like, why is this taking so long for me to go back to where I was? But I wasn't on receiver. Uh, let's see here. Here he is. Um, Saw 10 targets uh, in that game last week. And uh, I'm if there if you follow me on Twitter, there's two guys or X, whatever the app is called now. There's two guys I was really, really hyping up this offseason, uh, rookie wise, and it was Jaden Reed and Tank Dell. And Tank Dell showed what he could do last week. Uh, seven catches on 10 targets for 70 yards and a touchdown. He also, I want people to know this, Nico Collins touchdown was a pass intended for Tank Dell in the back of the end zone. And it, I don't Nico Collins just jumped up and took the ball. Like, I don't know if Tank Dell would have caught it because he was covered, but CJ Stroud threw that to Tank Dell in the back of the end zone, and Nico Collins just shot up and took it. Tank Dell also caught another touchdown, and it was called back uh, for what it's worth. But Tank Dell, 3,600, super good play, I think, um, and playable in, uh, in cash games. That's about it. I think all these mid-tier guys that like you can consider, you know, just fine. We'll know more um, later on in the week, but I definitely think you want Justin Jefferson. Um, you can use one of those cheaper guys. Uh, excuse me. And then you can, uh, you know, figure out if you can play Keenan or, or something else. I think that's what I would uh, lean towards right now. Tight end, uh, per usual. We're looking for some cheaper guys here. We do have Kelsey on the slate. We do have TJ Hawkinson in the slate. TJ Hawkinson uh, is an interesting tournament play. He always seems to nuke in these, like, shootout-type games. He did it a few times in Detroit. Um, he certainly did it in Minnesota last year. He had a couple of just monster games once he got traded. So uh, TJ Hawkinson, I do think, is great, great tournament play. He always seems to nuke these, these big games. Mark Andrews is fine for tournaments as well in a good matchup. But uh, dropping down here, looking for these cheaper guys. Jake Ferguson, my boy, I talked about him last week on the video. Um, he did get in the box. Tight end scoring is bad per usual. So we're looking to save as much money here and hope our guy gets in the end zone. Uh, Luke Musgrave was very, very chalky in week 
two. Uh, people will probably go back to him again, especially if somehow Christian Watkins out again. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, I think, is fine for sure as well. Six and, and nine. Would not be mad about that at tight end, especially uh, against Washington. I, I do feel like the first few weeks from watching the games, like I have seen firsthand that there are kind of some uh, – it seems like tight end has been open against Washington the, the first few weeks. Uh, Zach Ertz has 10 and 8 targets. Now, Zach Ertz is just a truly disgusting play, especially against the defense of the quality of Dallas Cowboys. But, uh, I mean, he's 3,500, and he's gotten 10 and 8 targets. So I, I would definitely be fine signing up for Zach Ertz in, in cash this week. Um, Logan Thomas is questionable, and it's a concussion. So I actually do think there's a decent chance that he misses this game. And if he does – you guys know I love Cole Turner. He's only got four targets total in his first two weeks. But if Logan Thomas was out, I 100% think he would play a bigger role. Um, not the greatest matchup against Buffalo with how they scheme their defense up and some of the linebackers they have, but Cole Turner's a baller, and he's super athletic. So at 2,700, I would certainly be fine signing up for that in cash games. Uh, other than that, people I, I think I, people actually kind of played Troutman – Last week, and uh, he did what Adam Troutman does, which is zero catches. So, yeah, pass on uh, pass on the Troutman for me. But uh, now, right now, uh, one of the Bills guys, Musgrave, Ertz, Ferguson, and uh, definitely Cole Turner if Logan Thomas is out. Finishing up here at defense quickly. Uh, let's see. Who's cheap that we could use? Commanders are definitely viable. They were chalky in week one. They have double-digit DK points in both weeks. Josh Allen will turn the ball over. They're at home. Commanders, 2,400. Certainly will probably be pretty decently owned. Uh, Jets at home against New England, and Mac Jones is definitely interesting to me at 2,800. And that's probably it for cash. I, I never really want to spend 3K on, on a defense in cash. So uh, Commanders or... Uh, the New York Jets for me upon first look. If you made it all the way through the video, I appreciate it greatly. Let me know in the comments if the audio is better. Let me know in the comments how you guys did in week two. Hopefully you guys won like I did. Let me know in the comments who you guys liked this week. And like the video, follow the channel, um, subscribe, support us. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into this video. I'll be back on Wednesday for the Survivor Pool video. I'll be back on Saturday for the Saturday night stream here on the YouTube channel. And then Sunday morning, question and answer, final stream as well. So good luck in week three. I'll see you guys next time.